Hello, welcome to you people. I'm your host, Roy Koshi. Well, we have a really exciting program for you tonight, or today, whenever you're watching this. My guest is Daryl Lamont Jenkins. Daryl is the founder and executive director of One People's Project, which is a civil rights organization based in Philadelphia and is commonly associated with Antifa. Daryl is also prominently featured in the upcoming documentary, Alt-Right Age of Rage, which opens on August 17th. Here's a trailer. There's a gentleman by the name of Richard Spencer. He's basically known as a right-wing propagandist, and he's always had these hate politics coming along with him. Have you ever met Antifa? What are they like? Daryl Lamont Jenkins is a black activist whose job it is to try to silence people like me. There is no doubt that the alt-right has been attractive to angst-ridden young men. Frustrated and ambitious young men change the world. The author of the Charleston Massacre was radicalized and ultimately committed mass murder based solely on what he read on the internet. I certainly did not want it to happen, but I'm not going to play into their game denouncing the movement. Hate speech is protected under the First Amendment, but if what you say does cause some sort of harm, people are allowed to respond. We all got to step up. We cannot ignore what's out there. We got to fight back. They are doing it for us. It's not me convincing people through rational argumentation. We've entered a new stage where political violence has returned. As far as I'm concerned, you pick this fight, now fight. My policy is never back down. The ideology is a prescription for mass murder. Please welcome back to the program, Daryl Lamont Jenkins. Thank How you, you doing? How you doing? Doing good. Doing good. How are you? Can't complain. Can't complain. It's been busy since the last time yeah. I came across here. So, Daryl, mm -hmm. you were on the show uh, back in 2014, maybe around this time, actually. It may have been like the fall of 2014. Yeah, I think somewhere. I think it was somewhere around in. I mean, we were talking about uh, a lot of the police brutality activity that was going on, or rather the activity against uh, police yeah. brutality uh, right, at yeah. the time. Yeah, we were talking about um, people calling the police on uh, black folks. Uh huh. I was wondering. I was wondering if you was going to bring that up yeah. because if you notice now, people are responding to that. Yeah, that, that was always <laughs> like that's always that that was, uh, and I guess like this is a good thing that people kind of like broke the code on that one and like, oh wait, oh yeah, it's not just the police. There's somebody sicking them on us, and now we've discovered that element in the equation, mm -hmm. basically of a. Uh, well, see, here's what's interesting, and I've been trying to tell people this for a while now. It's like you always hear the right mm -hmm. um, take pot shots at us every time we go after the police. They always have something yeah. smart alecky to say or whatever. Right. They're not saying a word about us going after the folks that are calling the on the police going after the folks directly oh i didn't consider yeah that. i mean i mean we heard them go after our folks in starbucks yeah they they yeah. had something to say there right but all the other ones after that barbecue becky um permit, uh, patty. permit patty and all them, of them yeah uh, you see us going after them you see um them getting fired or going through whatever hell yeah nothing not a peep from those usual conservatives that like to pop off with something stupid to say back at us and yeah. that says to me we uh -huh. hit on something yeah we hit on yeah. something well so like why do you think that is i mean is it is that just because so Conserve, like if you go after the police or the institution of uh, the police department, they have their talking points of like it's a dangerous job and you know it's mm -hmm. they're here to protect us and you know and if you didn't commit so much crime, all that stuff. 
Is it just like with the, um, is it that indefensible? Like when we see like the person like calling the cops for a frivolous thing, is it just they don't have anything to back it up now? No, I think basically what the deal is is that although we do have our issues with the police, of mm -hmm. course, um, I think we hit on who the real problem people are when it comes to this stuff. Yeah. We do have a lot of people out there who can't get over themselves, see black people in their um, right. eyesight or whatever, and think it's time to cause them some grief. And they're being directly yeah. handled in that regard. I'll be honest with you. That's one of the reasons why a lot of them don't like Antifa because Antifa goes directly after the right. Yeah. And um, they can go after, they can harass Democrats all day long, but they really don't like it when they get harassed back, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, like, I, I guess, like, on that, like, so the person uh, calling the cops, um, is it... Because I feel like the uh, like a lot of, like the people that you were just not describing on mm -hmm. the right who would take pot shots at uh, you know people who aren't on the right who criticize police brutality. Um, mm -hmm. It's weird that like these folks would like these are the sorts of people who would just call the cops on you mm -hmm. know a black person, person of color being in the wrong neighborhood. Um, I'm just trying to figure out like how they haven't come to like. How they haven't figured out their defenses yet of Permit Patty or ba BBQ Becky. Because um, there aren't any. There just aren't any? There just simply aren't yeah. any. We're catching them dead to rights. Yeah. That's really what it is. Even, um, and let's be fair, even the police, when they come up to these scenes, are looking at the situation and going, uh, oh, why yeah. didn't you just leave them alone? Like the guy who was drunk <laughs> and tried to harass the woman who was wearing the Puerto Rican flag. Oh, yes. Why did he do that? Exactly. Yeah. And look, but what? But look what happened in that case. You had a police officer just standing there while he did all the harassing. Yeah, you're right. And he got fired. Yeah. Because he should have made a move. He didn't make a move until somebody took matters into their own hands and tried to tell the guy to get going. And yeah. then that's when he decided to stick get between the two of them. That's right. Yeah. <coughs> Pardon and then me. like even like in the the incident in California, I think it's like Bob Marley's granddaughter or something, like mm -hmm. the woman who called the cops on them. Like yeah, even if you watch that video, you can see the cops their hearts not in it. <laughs> They're sort no. of like Ugh. Well that like I mean cuz that's something that James Baldwin in the 60s. There's an interview in the late 60s where he talked about they asked him about police brutality and he said something I I'm not going to phrase it as eloquently. Mm -hmm. uh, but he talked about like how police brutality and the police generally they actually represent they're a symptom of the wider culture basically so he doesn't blame the individual police for being the way they are it's a culture that's directing them to sort of act this way and I think like he spoke about that in the late 60s and I guess like now that we have all these smartphones and we have all this maybe concrete evidence that's like, exactly what it it's is it's just like people that's are now worried that's that. what makes the difference between what happened back then what happened in the 80s and 90s and so on and what happens now yeah. because we're a generation that can actually show you what we've been talking about all those decades yeah. all those generations right. and the only thing that gets me upset about it all is that we can't go back and help oh yeah the Philip Pinnells and mm -hmm. uh, Cedeno's and the um, Eleanor Bumpers of the world you know yeah. um, we have to deal with who it is that is getting um, harassed and killed today because yeah. we have the evidence showing people exactly what happens. I mean, interestingly enough, one of the things, if we're going to go back to the police, one of the interesting things that you see now is the fact that the police will say one thing in the report, the video will say otherwise. Yeah. So. Of course, yeah. And that's, um, um, yeah, that, that's, um, yeah, we have that concrete evidence. Um, and I guess um, here's maybe something that, is frustrating about that. It keeps happening. Like you had like, you had like the first round, I mean, over these last couple of years, you've had people get exposed for calling the cops for frivolous reasons. But then like, it just keeps on happening. Like mm -hmm. it keeps on like, you know, even like here in New York, you had like the Aaron Schlossbergs, the guy, the racist guy who was threatening to call ICE on these two women who were speaking Who's Spanish. Who's tight with the, I should know, Schlossberg is tight with all these neo-fascists that we've been dealing with, by the way. Yeah, he was at like, the, some of these marches, right? Yeah, he was hanging, every time you see a video of Schlossberg, he's hanging out with the Proud Boys, and yeah. 
um, Proud Boys being one of the uh, hate groups out there. Yeah. And uh, no one's really talking about that aspect of it. Right. But the fact that, but the fact that he is hanging with them should be something that we should keep in mind. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But like, and I but I guess like even like after that incident and that like made you know people protested outside of his apartment. It kept on happening. Like I think like. BBQ Becky happened after that. The permit patty and even, like in the Bay Area. Even this guy, uh, yeah, Bay Area is just getting their teeth kicked in with these clowns. Oh. Um, you had BBQ Becky. You had the guy. I forgot what they called him. Uh, who was throwing a homeless man's um, stuff oh, into yeah. the into the lake? Um, you had uh, the one who was messing with the girl with uh, with the with the water. The eight-year-old girl who was trying to sell yeah, water on her patty. stoop. That's yeah, she she was another one. Um, it, it was just happening more and more in the Bay Area. That was San Francisco. Yeah, that was. And so it was just like, what's going on in Oaktown? Yeah, <laughs> I I don't know. Like I kind of think like the liberal cities. This is my opinion. I lived in the Bay Area for a little while. Like there weird is a thing to that. Mm-hmm. What's that? There is a thing to that. We're not yeah. necessarily talking about the right wingers. No, no. I mean, it, despite what I just said earlier, we're not necessarily talking about right wingers. Yeah, it's people like who have sort of like weirdly because of they've decided that they've absolved themselves of racism and mm-hmm. they and the, their own racism just sort of I guess came out in different ways. I, yeah, I, that'd be like. A but now there's another weird thing that's happening. Here's where there is a case of probably fighting back. Normally, we find out who these characters are within maybe 24 hours Mm -hmm. but we've just had a series a a couple of cases right now where we haven't found out who they are who is the guy who yanked the black man out of the car out of the train car having a seizure we still i still haven't found that out yet maybe we have i just haven't i just haven't seen anything online about that guy yeah neither have i you're right i've seen the footage but not yeah oh that's interesting i mean now we get to the point where it's a possibility some of these folks are being protected by the people that are close to them. Yeah. Well, so, okay, so here's here's my question about that. Um, as we're being exposed to um, the racism that causes police brutality, and like mm-hmm. we're, we're seeing like the actual people who cause this whole problem, um, it's not, it doesn't seem like it's getting better. Yeah, I mean, going back to that. That's the problem. Yeah. Like, I mean, so what, like, so... Is it just like, and, and there, it's not like there's no consequences. Like, people do lose their jobs, they lose yeah. their practices, they lose whatever. Um, a lot of these people, like, um, you know, the Permit Patty person lost her, I think she lost her business. I can't remember now. She, yeah, Permit Patty, I believe, was running a marijuana for dogs thing, or something. And yeah. I think, she, oh, yeah, that's right. She was doing that. She was getting her dog stoned. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she had, uh, she, she lost her business. Yeah. Yeah. But <coughs> in regards to what keep happening, when this has been this has been going on for over a hundred some odd years sure yeah so it's gonna take some time i am guessing how having said that they better pick up the pace well that's so that's <laughs> the thing it's like there's direct consequences like the cvs manager got fired the CBS yes c- forgot the about him. whatever um but people are still motivated to do this so like even like the guy who like what you just now said the guy who dragged off the black mm-hmm. man on the train and we haven't found out. And so what is it that motivates people? You know there's consequences. Like, A, you know you're going to get fired. Or if you're going to protect yourself from that, it's a lot of work for you to, like, go delete all your stuff, go delete your online life. Really, you got to protect yourself a bit. So, like, what? Like, it's is my, it really worth it? It's what, what my is, father what would refer to. It? My father keeps uh, refer to something like this as unconscious racism. These folks actually don't think that it's a problem harassing somebody that they have already had in their mind all their life is beneath them. Yeah. Um, they're actually shocked when those same people or people that are, um, are that are down with them are pushing back saying, leave them alone. What are you doing? How in the world do you think that you can just yank somebody off a train? Yeah. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, even without a camera, that doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, But yet they do feel this way. And I think it's just going to be more and more of us asserting ourselves to push that back for good. I mean, I think that's basically where where it's come down to. Yeah, let them keep on doing it and we'll just keep on videotape them and we'll keep on um, costing them their jobs and we'll fill their roles. (laughs) 
Yeah, totally. That's another yeah. thing that's coming up, too. I mean, the fact of the matter is, we c they can be replaced. Yeah. <laughs> like, I guess and like, they will be replaced. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's just interesting to me because, like, I, I, I think I get hung up on the psychology of, like, why people are doing things that they do. So, like, and it's just, like, it's this very weird, like, the idea of whiteness is already a fiction, I mean, there's no, I mean, sorry, white people, but there's really no such thing as white people. It's like, <laughs> and like so many people who are considered white, like Irish, Italians, Slavic people, Germans even, like weren't considered white at times. Like they were mm -hmm. sort of like the other. Oh, definitely not. As so, a I always try to tell people, as a matter of fact, I was speaking with one of the uh, white supremacists and said, hey, look, there used to be a time where you could not just lump yourself in one white category. Yeah. You tried that nonsense um, maybe 150 years ago if you were Irish. Yeah. Says, no, you're Irish. We're not the same. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, <laughs> but it's something that people are willing to lose their livelihood over, this idea of like being part of this whiteness. and they that Which they will. What, yeah. Is that, is they, that? they never have before. Yeah. It's just over the past year. I mean, look what happened to the kid that that um that called on John Crawford in Ohio in, oh, yeah. at the Walmart, the one that we were we talking about, about last er time. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Yeah, John Williams Crawford the third. Look that up. Um, mm -hmm. And what was the guy's name who called the cops? I on cannot him? remember his name. I always try to keep John Crawford's name in my head, but yeah. yeah, I I can't remember that dude's name. I think that there was a threat of him getting arrested. Yeah, but nothing manifested. I think he basically was able to go on with his life. And then th I think like there was a there somebody on the news was like, "Do you feel bad?" And he was just like, "Nope, <laughs> he just, mm -hmm. nope, which is he doesn't fucking crazy." There's like, no reason for him to feel bad. I mean, no one has ever told him you should feel bad about. It. No, no one has made him feel bad. Right? Yeah. Probably because we can't remember his name. So, yeah. <laughs> but I think about all the other things that have gone down over the past uh, year or two. I mean, we do have there was a story about a kid who missed his bus. And had to walk 45 miles. Oh, yes. He got lost, knocked on a door. <laughs> that woman opened up talking about how, why is he bothering her and oh, them? Yeah. Leave them alone. This is our neighborhood, whatever. And her husband in the background's loading the shotgun. That's right. Yes. Yeah. He's in jail now. The yeah. um, the husband. Uh, so I mean, there's there's something out of that. But that was just before the Starbucks thing. Yeah. Um, but then there's also the things that have happened in uh in recent weeks that show you what will happen when they decided they don't need to call the police right florida where he saw somebody he saw a woman in a handicapped parking spot white guy saw a woman in a handicapped parking spot figured that um he would try to cause her grief her boyfriend sees him causing her grief mm -hmm. shoves him aside he shoots him Oh yes, this and this is uh, yeah. he was able to in the name of staying your ground. ground. Yes. So the um so the police chief has um has a chip on his shoulder. He's going up there basically talking like shit happens. Right. And yeah. And now Al Sharpton and everybody is down there now. So he's talking about maybe Al Sharpton should mind his business or whatever. Well, everybody else is down there wondering how come you ain't taking care of business as a sheriff. Maybe that sheriff should be removed. If yeah. He's going to get cocky about some clown that decided deadly force was the way to deal with somebody that was in a handicapped spot. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And yeah. he wasn't a cop. Bad enough, the cops have that kind of attitude, but this was a civilian. Yeah. In Florida? Yeah. For the second time now? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, for the second time. And and also, like, that stand your ground defense is not applied equally. Um, Marissa no, it is not. Al Alexander, I believe her name is. Yes. She actually was, like, when you learn about those facts... She really was standing her ground mm -hmm. and did not did not get her out of that. So it's this arbitrary people like invoke it. It's it's it, it's a law. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I'm a gun owner. Mm -hmm. And if I'm in Florida and something goes down, I'll take my chances. I'll sure. take my chances. If I have to go to jail because some clown is going to try to harass me for <laughs> like Zimmerman. Truth be told, if it you know. If it yeah. was something like a George Zimmerman situation, as soon as I saw him going for whatever in his pocket, that's what happened. Yeah. Trayvon Martin saw him going into his pack pocket. Yeah. it was He was reaching for his cell phone. But what if that was a black dude reaching for his pocket and Trayvon Martin was a cop? What would have happened to that black dude? Oh, absolutely. So I trans I transfer that to me. Yeah. If, I, if Zimmerman did that, I would have drawn down on him. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, maybe the cops would have came by and broke it up before um, anything would have gotten too far, but my attitude is we both would have walked away alive. Pissed off, but alive. Sure, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's... Yeah, let me... Let me circle. But, uh, we can go on forever, man. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. That's a that's a deep <coughs> topic. But I do. Um, I want to highlight. Um, you know, I want to transition a little bit to uh, one of the reasons you're here and returning to our show. Uh, you are featured in this documentary called Alt Right: Age of Rage. Yes. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, what this documentary is about? Well, it debuted at South by Southwest uh, back in March, mm -hmm. and um, it's directed by Adam. Bala Lo, mm -hmm. and it was originally supposed to be about Trump's first year. Yeah. As they went along with filming and talking to people, they realized they had something else on their hands. Right. And more to the point, it ended up turning into a documentary about myself and the things that I go through as anti-fascist as an anti-fascist activist yeah and Richard Spencer basically it's about me versus Richard Spencer right <laughs> the, who uh, I should stress um, is a white supremacist yes is the uh, executive director of the National Policy Institute right yes. he's a very he's put the dapper respectable look on mm -hmm. white supremacy although like I don't know I don't I guess he's not so much getting away with that anymore like he well he's I, I think um, after all the stuff that had gone on most recently in Ann Arbor where he tried to go on a college speaking tour I think he's getting burned out Charlottesville um, burned out a lot of folks yeah um, on that side and and yeah. all, all right like at least look it looks like from the trailer uh, that we showed um, it looks like the does the movie culminate in Charlottesville? Is that what happened? Is that pretty happened? much? Okay. Pretty much. I'm so. <laughs> I got to tell you, it was so funny too because um, it was like they had already been filming to begin with. Yeah. I um and they was basically telling me, yo, whenever anything is going down, um, just let us know what will be the best things to go to and such. I told them, yo, you might need to come to Charlottesville because there's a lot going on yeah. and everybody is mobilizing around it. So they pretty much um, went to Charlottesville because of me. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so I, I, and I'm glad the cameras were there capturing a lot of what, right. um, what happened and uh, from our perspective, I should say. But they also did something else. They also covered a lot of the other events that were happening um, prior to Charlottesville, particularly um, uh, the American Renaissance Conference that takes place in Nashville every year, or rather at the Montgomery Bell Park Inn just outside Nashville. And, and the, the American um, Renaissance Conference, who's that run by again? That's run by a gentleman named Jared Taylor. American that's Renaissance right. is a publication. That's right. Yeah. That's been around since I believe 1990. It's basically a white supremacist publication. And they hold these conferences every year, which is supposed to be of the upper crust of white supremacy. Yeah, Jared and Taylor's in the, he's briefly, he talks about you in the trailer, basically. He yes, talks he like does. this, and he's. <laughs> Well, it's the white race, you know. Yes, yeah. yes. Daryl Lamont Jenkins is a uh, uh, is basically a hater. He does. He hates people like me. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, later for you, man. Yeah, it's not about you. You're old and going to die soon. But that's sort of like Jared yeah. Taylor is sort of maybe. Is he? He's sort of like maybe the the step before Richard Spencer, like the guy, he, he's one of these. He's considered like to be the godfather of what they now call the alt right. Right, like he's a sort of yeah, and that was like the alt right is like this attempt to. Um, truth be told, Pappy Cannon is, but that's another story. Pappy Cannon is, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you talk about Pappy Cannon is the well from which all of this springs. Pappy Cannon is a friend of Jared Taylor. Pappy Cannon also employed Richard Spencer. Yeah, that's and right, yeah. the thing about it is. When you start, this is one of the things that we were trying to warn people about well before they started calling themselves the alt-right. Because this, these folks, as opposed to the swastika-wearing, cross-burning knuckleheads that stand on courthouse steps, these folks were inside the courtrooms. They were inside the colleges as our professors. They were our police officers. Yeah. Um, and they were, most importantly, they were our politicians. And... Yeah. We was trying to tell people, look, these folks have real careers. They want to advance themselves within the beltway. Yeah. And you've got to um, and you got to really pay attention to these guys because these are the ones that are going to cause damage. Trump yeah. got elected due to them. So. <laughs> yeah, and I, it's it's very interesting because you know obviously like you know uh, four years later you're back on the show and we're mm -hmm. we have a different president now. Uh, yes. 
And so the presidency of Donald Trump that has sort of brought all this all this stuff of like alt right, not neo Nazis, crypto fascist, neo fat, you know, all these people have like come to the surface and they're a lot more it's like a combination of like having a president who espouses those views, having a team in his administration that espouses like your Stephen Millers and what have you. Mm -hmm. And um, it seems that like a lot of neo Nazis are just openly running for office right now because they're very emboldened. Well, but I you're think saying, we're paying you're closer saying attention that, like, that to them now. They've yeah. always ran for office. I so think we're just okay. paying closer attention to them now. Yeah, and that could be like the, the fact that like maybe this is all coming to the surface could be like mm -hmm. the internet, it could be like just technology the way it is that just we can't help but you can't ignore it almost now but like exactly. so like you are saying like it's interesting to think about it that way like instead of thinking about all this like oh trump is this is trump's america mm -hmm. trump has brought all this together like you're kind of saying that uh, correct me if i'm wrong like this has always been america these people mm -hmm. like neo-nazis have always just or these fascists have always just run for office and they've won because like not enough people opposed them, or just not enough people took them seriously. Right. I mean, I think that you know it's it's good that the open neo Nazis are basically getting their teeth kicked in when they're running for office. But one, bear in mind, they actually do expect that. Um, they, I, I always look at their campaigns as simply being fundraisers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you take a look at Pappy Cannon's run for um, the presidency, or or Ron Paul's run for the presidency, which was rife with the same kind of nonsense. Yeah. Um, they lost, but all of a sudden, nonprofit organizations were formed by them in the wake of their loss. They used those campaign funds to, yeah. <laughs> to fund um, the American cause in Pat Buchanan's case and yeah. Campaign for Liberty in the case of Ron Paul. So, why shouldn't the left do more of that? Like, like why? Like, that's a good. Pl that's a good. And part of my cough, by the way. Not worry. Having a I'm devil matter. of a time. <laughs> ah, no, man, it's okay. Uh, we're casual here. Um, <laughs> so, um, I guess like mm. that's like what you outlined. I just don't. I mean, because I'm just. I don't think that way often. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. like, oh yes, I know that it happens. Like, I mean, a lot of extremists run for office, and then like they obviously don't. They maybe don't even expect to win, but it's like they do build a career. They get their name out in the public. Mm -hmm. They get their face on the mainstream, and then like they go on speaking tours where they get paid. So they kind of right. build this. But, but, but there are some that do actually win. I mean, of I'm, I'm going to yeah. call out Steve well, Donald Gillies. Trump. Yeah, Donald Trump. Yeah, Donald Trump. Everybody knows, but everybody keeps forgetting about maybe Steve King in Iowa, who's making oh. no bones about who he is, and Steve Scalise. Yeah, Steve Scalise. Mister, who, who has referred to, who has spoken at one of David Duke's events. Yeah, he called himself David Duke without the baggage. David right? Duke without the baggage. I mean. <laughs> Excuse me again, but he, he's okay. one of those folks that um, got a pass because no one was paying attention to people like him. Yeah. And yes, you can feel for him getting shot last year, but that's as far as it goes. Um, yeah. Well, some of us can feel <laughs> bad about it. I mean, I'm indifferent. But, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Ace Rodney, the talks for the superstars tonight. tonight.